Okay, so football is the topic now in the Sports Max Zone. The Reggae Boys took a step in a new direction this past Thursday. This as the decorated English coach, Steve McLaren, officially began his tenure as the head coach of the team. McLaren, who has a glittering CV, has served as assistant manager at Manchester United, both under Sir Alex Ferguson and Eric Ten Hag, and has won the Dutch League with 20, and most notably has also served as coach of England. The reputation which has garnered over the years has led many to believe that he could attract a host of Britain-born but eligible players to the reggae boys, such as Mason Greenwood and Rhys Nelson. Still with us, Chris Taylor, to break down the possibility of these players joining of the setup. Now, as a Liverpool fan, he may not be impressed. Well, Leighton is a Liverpool <laughs> fan as well. Both these gentlemen may not be impressed with an ex-Man United assistant coach um, joining the Reggae Boys. <laughs> I, for, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I've tried hard to look past that. I, I, I mean, but... My, my fear with McLaren is, you know, what is the objective of the GFF? What is the objective of the Reggae Boys right now? I think with the World Cup in 2026, that's the major thing. I think we need to get to a World Cup. Mm. McLaren having to come in now and learn the landscape. He's been coaching in England all of his time. Yes, at quality teams, but the, the culture is different. And it will take him a while to get used to the Jamaican landscape, to get to know the leagues and, 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 and the style of play, I think, in CONCACAF itself. I initially thought that the GFF might have been looking for someone internal. And when I say internal, not necessarily Jamaican, but someone within CONCACAF who has been there, done that, got it done. Um, a couple names jump out to me. I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, maybe of American background. I mean, like Bruce Arena, Bob Bradley, those persons who have been there, done that, and understand what it takes to get to a World Cup in CONCACAF, not necessarily in UEFA. So even though McLaren, for me, has a lot of ability. He was a pretty good midfielder in his time and has been around a long time. He has a, a, well, quite a host of clubs. He's, he's managed that and has had success. In terms of the time, I, I wonder if he can get that job done within less than two years, even though it's 2026, 20, you have to get the job done within a year. So mm -hmm. that's my major discrepancy with him yeah. right now. All right, we have Juan Arango who we'll get a comment from in a, in a short moment. But a quick comment from you, uh, Leighton, because Chris has some reservations about McLaren and the short period of time. We saw Leo Binhacker take over Trinidad and Tobago midstream in qualifying and got them to the World Cup in 2006. Is, is that so much of a hindrance? Um, I think the difference this time around is that because the, the squad is so filled with English players or English-based players, I think with McLaren understanding those players, possibly understanding those players better than perhaps Hargerson did, I think you probably get them a more cohesive team together more quickly than normally would expect. Because he knows these players. He's either coached against them or coached them during the course of his career. So I think what we will see, I hope we will see, is his ability to bring that talent together with an understanding because of the culture in which they used to play or still play and the culture from which he comes. Mm. The problem I have, and it's something I've spoken so about. So it would be a British-based team then? Yes, yeah, but it is a British-based team. Yeah. That's the reality For of For the it. most part, yeah. Yeah, because what the reality is that a lot of the local-based players are the local players are not at the level yet, and which is part of my problem, is that we're trying to build the house from the top down as opposed to building it from the, root, from the ground up. But that's, a, that's, a, that's one other time. But the fact is, now, he's going to have to work with the talent that he has. And the talent that he has is largely English-based. Because he knows those players, he knows the culture from where they're, going, they're, they're from, I think he might be able to find the success more easily than a Hargrinson, who I didn't particularly like this ultra-defensive style of playing. Maybe McLaren can get them playing a more effective and impactful kind of football. But you have to remember as well that he hasn't really coached a lot of these players who are there. So yes, they are English-based, but remember now that the state of the English league now, you have a lot of foreign-based coaches with different ideas, different strategies, Agreed. different style of play. So even though, yes, McLaren has been at Manchester United and you have great talent there, when you look across the board, the players that will be involved have not necessarily come from under his arm. So it, the styles of each of these clubs even more. Back in the day, yes, with England, they played generally the same style of football. But now with the insertion of overseas-based coaches, yeah. it has changed. And yeah. the styles differ heavily. Yeah, well, let's get Juan Giarango on his uh, uh, 
feeling of uh, Steve McLaren being appointed head coach of the Reggae Boys. Uh, Juan Arango, of course, is steeped in CONCACAF history. He understands uh, CONCACAF football and the path to any team trying to qualify for the World Cup coming up in 2026. Juan, your thoughts on Steve McLaren being given this job. First of all, was, was that a, a, an expected path that you thought that the JFF would go? With the JFF, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> so, I mean, you, they, I mean, they could have hired Leighton for all, all that would have, I would have been able to, to, to have. Or, or, you know, Chris Taylor, they would have, they would have hired him. But, but, but there, there's a lot of points. Chris said just something just a little. But actually, when was the last time Steve McLaren coached as a head coach? Mm, I, maybe 2019. The Dutch League? 2019, I think. 2019? Yes, yeah, so it's been about five years since he's been in charge. Mm -hmm. When was the last time he coached in the Premier League? Mm. Boy, 2014. Queen's Park Rangers. It was. It was been a while. Yeah. yeah. Newcastle ten, back ten, in 2015. Ten years 2015, at least. Yeah, yeah. approximately yeah. ten years. So. so I mean, you're getting a coach that it hasn't coached. Mm. So you're not impressed? <laughs> no, I've never been impressed with Steve McLaren. Mind you, he was the same coach that coached England, and they didn't qualify for the Euros. Mm. I mean, he's an average English coach at best, and English coaches are average at best. True. So again, a lot in the Caribbean is well. Look, uh, English, English. You got to look for another something, a, a coach that understands Jamaican culture. And I understand that there's been a lot of players that have been. And in part, it's good to bring in a coach like him. At the same time, of course, I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. I know that. <laughs> but, but when it comes to, and I'll, and I'll throw another question: What does Jamaica play in terms of football? I mean, when, when you want to sell to me Jamaican football. How does a Jamaican footballer play? Well, that that's and does Steve McLaren know that? Yeah, well, that's a difficult question to answer because there is no that's philosophy. philosophy. Yeah, there's no which, philosophy in Jamaican is, football. They don't have an identity. It, right it, it depends now. on who the coach is, Juan. It depends yeah, on who because the coach you is. Yeah. And, and, and I say this because you've gone from a German coach to a Dutch coach to an Icelandic coach to an English coach, mm. and there's no idea. And, and I, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure if it was you, Leighton, that said it, or if it was Chris that just said it recently. That yeah, Lil Ben Hacker took over halfway. Well, Cesare Maldini took over a few months with the Paraguayan national team in 2002 and took them almost to quarterfinals. Mm -hmm. But knowing that this is a short-term project, at the end of the day, you end up kind of saying, well, yeah, this is okay, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. the players that come in, and in the World Cup, the, the way it's formatted now. To a certain extent, and, and, yeah. and I might be the first one saying this, Jamaica's obligated to get to the World Cup. Yeah, well, I, I, I brought in the Bean Hacker thing, um, Juan. Oh, okay, which, okay. Which was stark because the World Cup qualifying had already started and Trinidad mm -hmm. and Tobago were toward the, ba the bottom of the, of, the, yeah. of the hexagonal, which it was at the time, and he just completely revived them. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm, just, I'm just saying that if, if you have a quality coach, they can get things moving. But then again, you're questioning Steve McLaren's quality, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, I am. I am. Yeah, and, and I, am. I, I, want, I mean, um, sorry, sure. Complete your point. Sorry. No, 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 no. No, to <laughs> your was point. point. I was just a little. To your point. I mean, I've been saying this for forever that because Jamaica does not have a national philosophy, any coach that comes in tries to impose that philosophy on, on a short term basis, and it never usually works because then. The style of player, as you just mentioned, this, the type of player that Jamaica has is not necessarily the type of player that will fit a system that the coach wants to play, which then exactly. creates this dysfunction within the team itself in terms of the, the lack of effectiveness. We saw that with Hargrison, where the team has no midfield and they, they sit back and wait forever and then try to score on the counter, which never usually works, because that's not the type of football that works best for Jamaican players. It's a problem exactly. that, that I think continues to, to pervade the Jamaican dynamic, where there's no national philosophy, so we select a coach randomly as opposed to having a coach that fits the system that we would like to play. I mean, I mean going to your point, too, I, I, don't see, I don't see Steve McLaren sitting in a, in a match you know, at a weekend over at Tivoli Gardens saying, hey, which player could I get? I don't see him <laughs> going to Waterhouse. I don't see him going to Montego Bay to, to, to look at the talent locally. So it's, and, and again, would, I understand the short-term Why would he the not? Why would he not? Huh? I, would, I would think that's part of his mandate. I, why would he not? I think ask him where he's going to ask him where he's going to be living. Well, I'm I'm not sure, but I think any, <laughs> that, any, that's any, the next question that has to be found out. Any, any, any national coach of the team now, to me, would, would need to do that. 
even though, so. even though the narrative is suggesting that McLaren will be scouring the English leagues, the Premier League, to get the best available or the best mm -hmm. that could qualify to play for Jamaica and focus on that. Juan, do you think then that the, 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 the reason for going for McLaren was based on the fact that Jamaica's complement has merely been British-based players at the moment? Do you think that that was the thinking behind it, that look, let us get in an English coach who will be more aligned with their style of play or, or what they are used to in terms of tendencies, etc.? Again, what is your style of play? Mm. Mm. I mean, you know, I mean, he, I know that he, he he did speak to Holgren some before he took over. I understand that, but but I, I also don't see him. Uh, I mean, it, does, does he know what what has gone on? Does he know everything that that we you know everything that's gone on outside of the pitch? Uh, you know, the whole situation with Leon Bailey. I mean, th does does he know how to rectify that? Is that going to be rectifiable? Yeah. Knowing that that Leon Bailey might also be a, 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 a symbol of, of the recruiting or what can end up being a defective recruiting for Steve McLaren. Is yeah. that going to be, or those facets going to be, uh, be you know, rectifiable in, in, the, in the short term? Yeah, because well, that's going to be important. Yeah, well, you, those are going to be questions that are asked. Yeah, well, you recognize the, that, Juan, the position that you are at is as mm -hmm. far as north is from south, from the JFF because they have labeled McLaren by far the best candidate for the job. They have said there was, there was no one even close to, to him as far as his CV is concerned. So they are... Well, if you compare the, him to Greg Berhalter, yeah. <laughs> so, 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 Juan, is your thinking then that, based on what I've been saying, that, you know, they might have been better suited getting someone local? When I say local, I mean CONCACAF based, who already has the understanding of what it takes to get to a World Cup from CONCACAF and the landscape. The last one that took him to a World Cup wasn't from CONCACAF. True. Con the ball. So, I mean, maybe. I mean, yeah, maybe there's a then. lot of coaches. There's a lot of coaches. And, and basically, you know what? You're exactly right, because Braz I wouldn't bring in a Brazilian coach if my life depended on it. Uh, Why not? You bring in... Why not? They're completely outdated. Okay. Brazilian coaches are outdated. For, for the most part. <laughs> and, and uh, I mean, just look at Dorival Jr. and start going down, and, and you start looking at Brazilian coaches, they're outdated. Mm -hmm. it, it's, I mean, I don't think it's about a nationality per se. It, it, it's about understanding the idiosyncrasy of where you're going more than anything else. And that helps you accommodate to us. It's not, well, I play this way, and, and that's the way my national team's going to play regardless. You mm -hmm. got to understand how, how certain countries certain idiosyncrasies from a football standpoint are and then be able to implement a style or then be able to accommodate to what the players are able to do mm -hmm. and, and I think that that's probably more important but again I'm saying this thinking long term and that's where I fail in terms of, of my assessment overall because at times I get overshadowed by that forgetting at the same time that this is going to be a short-term project now if Steve McLaren qualifies for the World Cup don't be surprised that he might end up going for a longer period of time because he's already there, he's already established something, and then the grassroots can end up being laid a little bit better. We'll see. I don't. I mean, this is this is something that we don't know what's going to happen. We're all just throwing stuff out there, and and we don't know exactly if anything's going to stick or if everything ends up working to perfect to perfection. Do you think Juan that he'll be able to convince Mason Greenwood to play for the Reggae Boys? Mason Greenwood's got other issues to worry about right now, <laughs> but but uh, but in terms of, of you got to go where you're wanted. If you wanted it in Jamaica, why not? And, and it, it's a question of him being able to be committed, being able to say, "Well, I, I'm accustomed to this, but knowing where I'm going, and it'll be like that." And, and I'm still willing. I'm still happy, and I'm still glad because again, when you're talking about a club, it, it's different. When you're talking about a national team, there has to be a certain identification there's a certain commitment there's a certain emotional intangible aspect to it that it, it makes it a little bit even inexplicable that you want to be a part of something that goes beyond your own personal gain it, it's something about trying to help out a collective and and your reward at the end of the day is hearing the you know the millions of jamaican fans in jamaica and in in, in europe and throughout the world being proud and seeing what this team is going to be about. So, so it, again, it, it ends up being a, a very esoteric type of thing when you start yeah. looking at a national team. Yeah.
All right, Juan, we're going to leave it there. We are all anxious yeah. to see what happens because the uh, Jamaica Reggae Boys will begin competition under Steve McLaren's guidance next month at CONCACAF Nations League football. So we won't have long to wait to see what McLaren has as the man governing this project. Thanks, Juan. As usual, always all great right. talking to you. Peace cool, out. cool. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Yeah. Cool. Great. And we'll be back with more on the Sportsmax Zone after this.